Hey, hey, uh, gang, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm back and I'm going to be recording this video here again. Uh, this is actually the third time I'm recording it. I've been running into some issues with OBS um, in that it is not processing the video correctly. So this is what happened um, with the video that was uploaded. Luckily, Madison sent me an email to remind me or me that the, uh, there was something wrong with the video and then it ended abruptly. Um, and so I went and checked it out, and it appears as though what had happened was right from the very first frame of the video that was recorded, the audio and video started falling out of sync. The video started lagging. So it isn't really all that bad until about halfway through the video, at which point it just keeps getting worse. So I recorded it again, uh, thinking that maybe Bongo was the issue, thinking that while I recorded it in class, streaming twice uh, had caused a little bit of a problem. That doesn't actually seem to be the case. Um, the second video itself was also broken. So I'm recording this here for a third time uh, in order to be able to try and get you guys the information. I've since gone in. It looks like some OBS settings had been altered on me um, that were actually upscaling my video. Uh, I don't know why this would be the case. My, my resolution is just fine here. Um, but uh, I'm going to give this a go and see if this works. I've recorded a couple of small videos in between to check my settings, and they, they all seem to be working correctly. So uh, I'll give this a third go here and see if we can't get something that, uh, that works. Um, and so here we have it. I have Unreal open. Uh, I've gone and deleted all the content from, from before that I had done. So right now, inside of my content folder here, I only, only have the, uh, the actual content folder. So we're going to begin by creating some organization. We're going to create some folders in which we will store the various types of files. I typically do this in a project um, so that if I'm looking for a texture, I can go to the texture folder and everything I want is there. Um, if I'm looking for, you know, a mesh, whether it be skeletal or static, I can go into the appropriate folder and find everything I'm looking for. So I kind of find it a little bit of an easier way of keeping everything organized. So to begin with, I'm over here in my content folder. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to create a new folder. This is going to be named static meshes. And that's where we're going to put these static meshes. I'll go and create another folder. I'll call this one textures. And in here, we'll go and place the textures that we created. What else are we going to need? We're going to need to create some materials. So I'll make a materials folder. And eventually, we're going to need a way to track the variations of barrels that we made. So we're going to create an enumeration table that we're going to store in a folder called data. And this is where we can store all of that kind of pertinent information. Eventually, we'll have a folder for levels and a folder for visual effects and a folder for blueprints and so on. This list is going to be organic and it's going to grow. But for today, for this part of the assignment, all we need are really just these four folders. OK, to begin with, I'm going to go into my static mesh folder. And in here, I'm going to right click and go to import. And I'm going to go and select from my FBX folder my barrel. This is my low poly barrel. We're done with the high poly versions of things. So I'm going to import this into my scene. And in the settings that pop up, there's a few things that we want to check. First, this is not a skeletal mesh. We're putting it in the static mesh folder. So that should be an indication. Don't want skeletal mesh. Under advanced, I want to make sure that I'm combining my meshes. Again, with our barrel, it's simple enough that that won't break anything, but it's a good habit to get into. I also want to make sure that we're importing our normals and not computing our weighted normals. Finally, if I scroll down through this list to the material tab, I want to make sure that we are not importing textures, we are not searching anywhere for textures, and I'm not going to let it create any materials. If these things are turned on, all your textures and the material that it creates are going to show up in the static mesh folder. That kind of defeats the purpose of having all these other folders to store the different types of files in. So with that done, I'm going to hit import and the barrel should show up. Let's go ensure that the barrel has some collision. I'm going to double click on it and this is going to open the static mesh editor or viewer. Here we can go and move around and take a look at our barrel. We can see how big it is, both in size physically and in memory in the game. And we can see how many materials are currently assigned to it. Since we textured this in Painter to have only a single material, we should only have one material here. If you see anything more than this, you should go back to your barrel inside of Maya 
and assign this single material to the entire barrel and then re-import it. And that will fix this system here. Next, I'm going to go to Show and I'm going to go to Simple Collision. Unreal should have created missing collision on our mesh when it was imported. And that's what we're seeing here. We didn't set up any custom collision inside of Maya. So there was no collision on this model to be imported. Unreal is taking care of that for us and has generated an octagonal cylinder that's slightly larger than our barrel. And we can use that for our collision. So as long as you can go to show, simple collision, and this green cylinder appears, you're good. If it doesn't appear when you go to simple collision, simply go to the collision dropdown and go to add 26 DOP simplified collision. This is going to create a cylinder around your barrel similar to the one that I have here. I'm going to close this viewer since everything there appears to be as we want it. Control space is going to open our content browser again. And now I'll head over to textures. Here we can import the nine textures that we created inside of Substance Painter. I'm going to right click, go to the very top and import into textures. I'll head to my textures folder and I'll select all nine textures. As these are imported, three little dialog boxes are going to open up indicating that our normal maps have been converted. Well, if we go and take a look at what's happened here, opening up one of the normal maps is going to open the texture viewer. And here we can go see that these little arrows here, which you're seeing as this little tiny return arrow, these indicate settings that have been altered. So three settings have been changed when the normal map was imported. First, the texture group has been set to world normal. The compression setting has been set to normal map and the sRGB has been removed. This is exactly the way that we want a normal map to behave. And it's kind of nice that Unreal detects this for us and sets this up. The unfortunate side of this is that our ARM maps, our combined roughness, metallic and ambient occlusion maps did not get the same treatment here. They're just being compressed as textures. None of the settings have actually been changed. Using the compression settings drop down, I'm going to select masks from the category. This is going to both change our resolution, our compression setting to masks, and it's going to turn off the sRGB, <coughs> both of which, excuse me, are settings that are required for these textures. So that one is set up correctly. My second one is set up correctly. And finally, my third one is set up correctly. If you notice any of your icons for any of the files that we've imported or any of the files that we're going to create as well, there's a little white asterisk in the bottom left hand corner. This is a shorthand note to indicate that these files have not yet been saved. Were I to close the editor now and not save anything, those files would not appear if I were to reopen the editor again later. I'm going to avoid saving right now and I'll save once we've created more of the content we need. This is the save button and you can save at any point in time. The next thing we're going to create are two materials. The first material, I'm going to right click, create a material, and I'm going to call it MM. Uh, and we'll call it barrels. Let's do a capital B barrels. So this is a master material. So the master material is going to the material that drives all of the other materials we use. Double clicking on this will open the material editor. And here we are treated to a preview sphere. Our details of whatever we have selected. Currently, it's the actual material itself. And then we've got our graph. And in the graph, we have an output. And in the output, we have several different properties that we can change. I'm going to hit control space to open our content browser again. I'll head to the textures and I'm going to select the first three barrel one arm, barrel one BC and barrel one normal. I'll drag these into the graph space. These have now created texture samples. These are lookups that look at various um, textures in our content. I'm going to plug the RGB output of the base color into the base color. I'm going to plug the RGB output of the normal 
into the normal, and I'll plug the red, which is the equivalent of the A in our ARM, into the A ambient occlusion. The R of our ARM is the green channel, and the R stands for roughness. Finally, the M in ARM is our blue channel, and that M stands for metallic. Plugging those things in, the material should now render the way that we want it to and appear exactly the same way that it did inside of Substance. I'll do a quick save of this material to compile it, and we'll go create the second material we need. Since what we're going to be doing is creating a barrel that can be altered or its material can be altered to change its physical appearance, we're going to want to create a material instance. An instance of a material is one that, one that can be changed during gameplay. This material is more static. It's something that's kind of locked into place. So by creating an instance, we're going to be creating a material that we can go and edit. To create an instance, I'm going to select the master material upon which I want to base my instance. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create at the very top material instance. I'll call this MI barrels since it is the material instance of the barrels and I'll open up that editor. Here we have a different editor. This is the material instance editor and not the material editor. Gone is the graph and properties and all we have available is our preview and some parameters that we can change. Currently, we don't have any parameters that are useful to change in order to alter the appearance of the barrel. To do that, we need to go and alter the master. So I'm gonna open the master material again. And what we're gonna do, these three texture samples are what we wanna edit real time. We wanna be able to swap out and place our own textures into these categories. The first texture sample is our base color. So I'm going to right click on it, convert it to a parameter, and I'll call that parameter base color. I will do the same thing with the normal. I will right click on it, convert it to a parameter, and call it normal. The ARM gets the same treatment. Select it, convert to parameter ARM. Now, this hasn't changed the expense of this material in any way. Instead of being texture lookups, now these are parameter 2Ds. They operate in exactly the same way. We can go and hit Save, which will recompile this material. Now, if I return back to the material instance, we have available to us slots where we can change what textures are being used. This means the material instance is now correct and ready for use. I will close those editors, and now we can go back to our static mesh and assign the material instance to the dropdown. If you have starter content in your project, you're going to see a lot more materials here. So simply searching MI barrels will bring up the material instance that we created. Selecting it from the list will apply it to the mesh, and we can just close this dialog. You don't need to save it, it will now retain that. That's most of everything created. Really, the only other thing we want to make is something that's going to give us a leg up when we start scripting. When we start scripting, we're going to need a way of converting the barrel that we have into the other versions of the barrel. We're going to want to be able to swap between them. In order to swap between them, we need to know how many barrels there are and you know what they are so we can have a kind of list that's going to track that. This is what the enumeration table is going to do inside of the data folder. I'll go into that folder, right click, and under the blueprint category, I'm gonna create an enumeration. This is gonna create an enumeration table, which I'll call EM for enumeration barrel list. And that's gonna be the list of barrels that we currently have the ability of swapping between. We open up the enumeration table, we'll find that it's empty and all we need to do to set this up is start filling in the data. First, the description of our table. List of barrels. Next, we need the list. Using the little add enumerator, I'll click it three times to create three enumerations, and we'll go name them. 
My first barrel is a black oil barrel. So I'm going to call it black barrel. And its description will be oil barrel. My second barrel is red. And it's an explosive barrel. I've got a caution explosive symbol on the front of it. So I'll name it explosive barrel. I'm going to go and try and keep my syntax the same. And then finally, the last one was a green barrel on which I pasted a gas company. So we're going to go and call this one green barrel. And I'll make its description gas barrel. Now, if your barrels are not black, red, and green, don't name them black, red, and green. Use names that will identify your individual barrels to you. And if the name itself is not enough, the description will help you identify which barrel is which. With that done, we can save the enumeration list, and that's it. We now have all of the content needed in order to create our work. I'm going to hit save all and save the list of things that we just did in engine. Save selected. And then you're free to record your video indicating that you've created this content. The video should contain the following information. Number one, it should contain your static mesh. So I want to see that you've imported your static mesh correctly and that it's in the right place. I also want you to show me in the static mesh editor your collision, showing me that that green cylinder is there and in place. And I want you to show me that you've assigned your material correctly. This means that the material instance should be applied and not the master material. Second, I want you to show me your textures. In your textures, I want you to show me that your ARM maps have been adjusted correctly so that there is no SRGB. Third, you're going to show me your materials. In your materials, I want you to show me that you have an instance and a master material, and that the only thing in the master material is just your three. 2D samplers. Samplers. These are your 2D images that you've brought in. Okay, your base color, your normal, and your ARM, and their names should be appropriate. Lastly, the fourth thing you're going to show me is your data table or your enumeration table. Here, I want you to show me that you've got your list. And that they are all dis, uh, they have descriptions. Uh, descriptions. There we are. So that is all the things that you need to list off that you need to show me. And once that's all done, you can stop recording your video and you can hand that in. And from that point forward, we'll be able to go in and start doing our scripting once these things are ready to go. So I hope this video has been helpful. I apologize for the delay in uh, in technical difficulties here. And, uh, and hopefully this one has worked well enough that it has allowed you to get the work done. All right, my friends, I will see you next time in class.